And good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to the Dollar General 375 here at Atlanta Motor Speedway. Pre prepare for one exciting race here today, no doubt about it. This is the track that everybody likes to come and race at due to its high speeds, and it uh, does have quite a bit of room to be able to race, too. Also, at this racetrack, the low side isn't the only place where you're able to get around. The high side also has a nice run coming off of turns two and turns four, especially coming down here into the somewhat tri-oval down to the start finish line we're going to see just exactly how that's going to play out here in our first mobile cup series race here at atlanta in division one on the pole for this race could be none other than tim walsh who's coming off a pretty dismal talladega and pocono not exactly great weekends for the 15 but he's going to try and bounce back here at atlanta and alongside him is connor breton in the 08, Lisa Shears lines up alongside of Leo Rogers, our defending winner at Pocono last week. He picked up his first career win, his first career start. Xavier Livingston rolls off from position number 12. We're going to be keeping our eye on him, and we're also going to be keeping our eyes on some of our top runners in the standings, see if they can maintain where they are in order to make a way, their way into the Mobile One Cup Series All-Star Race next week via top 10 in points. All right, so the command to fire the engines has been given. These drivers will roll off. They'll complete two pace laps. And there's a little trouble on pit road there. That almost looks like the four of Jordan Hester is blowing up. And that is indeed who it is. It is Jordan Hester in the Oreos Chevy Impala. He's blowing up, and that's not going to be good for him. Here's the starting lineup brought to you by Zola's Italian Restaurant. Jordan Hester, a tough way to start off this race at Atlanta for him as his engine lets go before he even receives the green flag. And speaking of green flag, it's going to be Tim Walsh and Connor Breton. Two Mustangs get us underway. The green flag is out in the Dollar General 375 version 1. This is the first of two division races in the Mobile One Cup Series. Two more drivers going to possibly be able to realize their dream and get into the all-star race. Lisa Shears starting to close in there. Here comes Adam Chambers. He's one of those guys we're going to keep, be keeping an eye on. He's in the top 10 in the standings. No wins this season, though, so he's got to rely on the top 10 in the standings to be able to get him into the all-star race. Is at the line. It looks like it's going to be Tim Walsh, and the caution's out. First caution of the day is out, so that means that Tim Walsh will lead us under the yellow flag. Over Adam Chambers and Robert Ban. Let's see what we're under the caution for. Oh, looks like James Qualls is involved. Yokohama Kato was also in it. Also, Eric Burton got a piece of it. Ryan Cooper, Hayden Klein, they were both involved as well as the caution waves for the first time today here at Atlanta Motor Speedway. Current leader is our pole sitter, Tim Walsh. Now there's the contact. Michael Harvey, who's second in the stands, I believe, gets in with Hayden Klein and Eric Burton. And then it's just on from there. Ryan Cooper, nowhere for him to go. James Qualls was up into the outside retaining wall. And that's basically how this whole thing starts. But something also happened to the 10 of Yokohama Kato. He's on pit road. Let's, let's try and go back and see what, find, what happened to the 10 car. Now we looked up to see what exactly happened to the 10 and the only report that we're getting on that 10 car is that he had to come down pit road and make an unscheduled pit stop due to a battery problem. They had to switch the battery under the green flag and that has caused him to go. I believe it's two laps. No, it's only one lap down. Only one driver retired from the race after that wreck and that was James Qualls. Jordan Hester is also retired from the race and that was due to the engine letting go on him earlier on here before the green flag even came out let's try and give you at least your top 10 as we get ready to go back to green flag race on lap 6 of 33 tim walsh is the leader second is adam chambers robert ban is third fourth is lisa shears fifth is jay juke her, uh 
Harui Tashimi runs in sixth. Seventh is Logan Wilson. Eighth is Connor Breton. Ninth is Leo Rogers. And in tenth now is Sean Henley. Top 15 is Ray Wilson, Jack Richards, Xavier Livingston, Dougie Shears, and Michael Harvey. As we go back to green flag racing. Now, Yokohama Kato, I don't think he's really going to be that much of a roadblock for these guys because there's no damage to that race car. He just was on pit road, so he's not a slower car. So he'll be up here in this pack probably most of the day unless he could race his way back onto the lead lap because he is only just one lap down. So if he could catch up here, get by Tim Walsh and have a caution come out, Yokohama Kato would find himself right back on the lead lap and be able to get back into contention for a possible win here at Atlanta. We're still green flag racing. Lisa Shears there. She's got the lap car of Yokohama Keita between herself and leader Tim Walsh. She now will go down to the inside, go to work on that lap machine. Robert Ban has now moved into third. Chambers slid the furthest back out of that exchange. He's now back into the fourth position. Now a battle for fifth between Logan Wilson and Connor Breton. Now speaking of battles, battle on for the lead. Lisa Shears gets the run to the inside of Tim Walsh. Then she'll take the top spot coming off of the final corner down here to the start finish line. Robert Band now slides by for second. I was expecting to see the outside line getting a little bit more of an advantage here, especially off the corners, but inside line seems to be getting more of the grip here today, and it could just be a fact of either a change in the temperature or change in the tire wear. You know, there's so many different factors that could play out into which line's going to have the advantage, but right now it seems like the low road is the fast road, as it's Lisa Shears, Robert Band, Logan Wilson, Adam Chambers, literally nose to tail, almost pushing each other there through turn four through to the front straightaway, and now a new battle for the lead. Robert Band will go to the inside, and he'll go to the front. Band in the 12 car, going to take the top spot. Whoa! Who was that back there? Is that Luke Walker? Someone got turned. I don't know who... Oh, there's a wreck up here. Oh, that was Ray Wilson involved. I couldn't tell who else. We'll look back here. Oh, I'm looking at Jordan Hester. I don't want to do that. I want to look at Ray Wilson. There's Wilson. There's Hayden Klein. I'll bet it may have been Ryan Cooper that got turned. Emilio Navarro is caught up in it as well, though, and the leader under the caution flag is going to be Adam Chambers over Logan Wilson. Sean Henley now moves into the top five in the third. Robert Band fourth, and Jay Juke is now fifth. Who else was involved in that? Jack Richards was in it. Brandon Parsons got a piece of it. Hayden Klein involved once again in another incident here. And we are under the caution flag. I think everything started with the 19 of Ryan Cooper. Let's go back and take a look. Okay, I ended up pinpointing the wrong car. I thought it was one of the hefty cars, but it actually was Ray Wilson here. And Emilio Navarre getting together to start this wreck. Starts actually way back here off the exit of turn two. They get together. Wilson slides down to the inside here. and You know, I, I don't really know why he... Came back up on the track so fast. I guess maybe he thought he could make it, but he enters back up here onto the racetrack and he's going three wide here with Emilio Navarre and Michael Harvey. Let's see what happens here. How does the contact occur? Oh, you know what? Ray Wilson didn't even start that wreck. It was Jack Richards. Jack Richards got into the, the five car. Ray Wilson had it saved, but. The Dollar General Chevrolet of Jack Richards, I don't know if he knew that Ray Wilson was a little bit slower than him or what, but he got into the Tax Slayer Chevrolet, turns him up into the fence along with Emilio Navarre, and then Brandon Parsons, he just plows in. There's nowhere for him to go. Wow. Hard, hard impact for these drivers. And then here comes the double, or not the double zero, but the O2. He gets through, it looks like. I thought there was another driver that got involved in this. I think it was another slower car. It may have been Ryan Cooper. No, it was Hayden Klein. Let's see just exactly who he hit. Someone was slow, disabled, not moving on the apron here. And he makes contact with maybe up here with the machine All right there, Brandon Parsons. Oh, no. Instead, it was the 19 of Ryan Cooper who got into Parsons right there and Slides of the racetrack. Hayden Klein actually did get through that. But uh, we're under the caution nonetheless. 
Lots of top runners involved in this one, including Ray Wilson, Emilio Navarro, and Jack Richards, all of whom are running inside the top 15 at the moment that the wreck occurred. So we'll prepare to go back under the green flag. After pit stops, things pretty much looking exactly the same as they were. I don't think there's any change in the top five. Well, there's a little change in the top five. You got uh, Jay Juke now up to fourth and Logan Wilson in fifth, but the top three are the same. Chambers, Henley, and Robert Ban. All right, so let's take a look and see who was involved in that wreck, who had to retire. Uh, three drivers retired from the race, and they were Ray Wilson, Jack Richards, and Brandon Parsons. Amelia Navarro was able to get damage repaired, returned to the racetrack, is currently running on the tail end of the lead lap in 35th. Yokohama Kato still there, one lap down. He is now in the 36th position. Here's the top 10 as we get ready to go back to Green Flag Race. We already gave you the top five. Sixth place now is Daniel Schwab. Michael Harvey is in seventh. Eighth is Xavier Livingston. He's looking for two in a row. Devin Wilson up to ninth. And in tenth is our pole sitter, Tim Walsh. Eleventh place is Dougie Shears. Connor Breton is twelfth. Tim Feigl runs in thirteenth. Fourteenth is John Dillon. And in fifteenth is Leo Rogers. The rest of the top twenty is Matt Nagan in sixteenth. Connor Germain in seventeenth. Alexandra Rogers in eighteenth. Nineteenth is O'Harmon And in twentieth is Jacob Rodriguez. So get ready to go back under the green flag. Chambers, Henley, Ban, getting ready to get us back underway. Out of those three, only two of them are locked into the All-Star race right now. Well, in a sense, locked in. Sean Henley is locked in due to his win earlier on this year. I think it was at California. Adam Chambers, he's trying to get in because of being in the top ten in the standings. And there's Yokohama Kato. He just got by. He is now on the tail end of the lead lap is the number 10 car. If you just joined us, Yokohama had to make a unscheduled pit stop. Well, he's going to go a lap down again here to Robert Ban and Daniel Schwab. But Yokohama Kato had to make a unscheduled pit stop just before going under the green flag. And it was due to a battery issue on the 10 car. He lost the lap. He still is one lap down to the leaders. And here comes a guy who wants to come into this race with a bang. Michael Harvey. I'll tell you what, this guy has had a bit of hard luck over the Snickers Cup Series. Not the best of luck in the uh, the Truck Series either, but this series, man, I'll tell you what, is Michael Harvey shining or what? He is in the top five in the standings. He is doing really well, and he's looking for his first win of the season. But out in front now, it's Dougie Shears. There's Xavier Livingston. He was out front for a little bit there. Oh, my word, they're around there in the middle of the pack. Tim Fiegel and Robert Band. That kind of just blocked up the racetrack there. Here they come through this final corner. It looks like Connor Breton almost got turned by Tim Walsh. Hangs onto it, though, and he's going to come down. He's going to lead us under the caution flag over Tim Walsh, then Xavier Livingston, Dougie Shears, and I think Levi, uh, not Levi Shones, uh, Matt Nayton is in the top five now. But who was involved in that? Oh, Jamie Muckley was in it. There's Cody Poe involved. Luke Walker is involved. Lisa Shears, Tim Feigl. That's the 11, I believe, of Daniel Schwab, who was up front for a little bit. Trent Dunham's on pit road. Whoa! What the... What was the 11 doing? What in the world? Well, the 11's doing something rather bizarre. You know, I, I don't know if maybe he ended up coming past the commitment cone. Had to come down onto the pit road or something. I don't know. But Trent Dunham's involved. He's already on pit road. Oh, there's Yokohama Keita. We were talking about him. He's involved. Bob Fergus is involved. Logan Ryan's involved. Harui Tashimi, Alexander Jones, Leo Rogers. Boy, there were a host of drivers we didn't even know were involved. Ryan Cooper, Hayden Klein, Robert Ban, Connor Germain. Oh, he makes contact with Joe Smith there coming off pit road. John Dillon may have gotten some of it as well. But there's a host of race cars involved in this, this wreck that puts us under the caution for the third time today. As pit stops are going on, let's show you just exactly what happened. Oh, man, look at that. Harui Tashimi and Emilio Navarro getting into each other off pit road there. Lots of drivers involved here. Let's see what happened. A look right here. Here's where the trouble starts. They started getting three wide and kind of making a sandwich out of John Dillon. Did Tim Fiegel and Sean Henley. Then you got Robert Band, Logan Wilson getting together. And they all just back up here. Daniel Schwab, Yokohama Kato, Leo Rogers. And then all these drivers. This is all going on up ahead. And watch how these drivers here, Robert Ban, Logan Wilson, they go down here, and it just blocks up the racetrack as Jacob Rodriguez gets a piece of it right there. Devin Wilson, Trent Dunham, Luke Walker, Logan Ryan gets turned around by Alexander Jones, Harui Tashimi, Jamie Muckley, Jake Berg, Bob Fergus, Lisa Shears, 
Haruri Tashimi, I think I mentioned. Oh, there's a car actually flipping upside down. That was Daniel Schwab. Cody Poe nails Tim Fiegel further up there. Joe Smith is involved. Here comes Steven Dillon into the picture. He's going to go up to the high side. Is he going to get through there? Don't know. Oh, look at that. Trent Dunham and uh, Daniel Schwab were actually both flipping over further up right there. Dunham was barrel rolling. Schwab was barrel rolling. Steven Dillon did indeed get some damage from that as he hit Daniel Schwab. Wow. That was about a 14-15 car wreck that occurred right there. And Emilio and Navarre picked up quite a few spots under that as well, getting through. But the caution is out for a multi-car incident that occurred off of turn two and all the way down to the end of the back straightaway. So we'll get ready to go back under the green flag. Lisa Shears is being listed as the leader, but she was involved in that incident and has front end damage. So I very much doubt if she's going to be a contender. I think she may just be out there for track position, maybe to lead lap, get some points or something. But Eric Burton, and Yoko Mikado, they're going to line up there on the inside line. Eric Burton is currently one lap down. Same for Yokohama Kato. Daniel Schwab is also listed a lap down, but he may have retired from the race after that barrel roll he took. Also out of the race of the cars of Alexander Jones, Cody Poe, Tim Feigl, Luke Walker, Trent Dunham has retired from the race, along with Jamie Muckley. They join Ray Wilson, Jack Richards, Brandon Parsons, James Qualls, and Jordan Hester in the garage area. Here's the drivers that are up in the top ten. Lisa Shears is the current leader. Pole sitter Tim Walsh has worked his way back up to second after pit stops. Connor Breton runs in third. Xavier Livingston is fourth. And John Dillon completes the top five. Sean Henley, he got a little bit of right side damage from that incident, but he is in sixth. Seventh is Dougie Shears. Matt Nathan is eighth. Logan Wilson ninth. And Adam Chambers is tenth. Connor Germain is eleventh. Emilio Navarre is in twelfth. Michael Harvey runs thirteenth. Fourteenth, Jacob Rodriguez. Fifteenth is Devin Wilson. Robert Ban is in sixteenth. Seventeenth is Zohar Manud. Hayden Klein is eighteenth. Nineteenth is Stephen Dillon. And Ryan Cooper completes the top 20. So we'll get ready to go back under the green flag. We are on lap 21 of 33. And Lisa Shears is able to get away. Her car apparently is up to speed. Well, maybe not. Look at this. Up on the high side comes Tim Walsh, Connor Breton, Xavier Livingston. They're going to blow by her. That damage on the front end of her race car just too much for her to be able to run up to speed with the leaders. So Tim Walsh back out where he started this event in front as he in the point Ford Mustang will lead off of turn four. Xavier Livingston, don't count him out. Man, I'll tell you what, if anybody's burst on the scene here in the Mobile One Cup Series, it's him. One win in one start. He may be looking for two wins in two starts here, as that number 21 has just come to life here near the end of the first half of the season. Connor Breton right there in third place, as the 08's been out in front for a few times today. He's looking for his first uh, Mobile One Cup Series win this season then you got Dougie Shears up here in fourth we haven't seen Dougie Shears up front in the one main Chevrolet in quite a while here but he's running the top 10 and rounding out the top 10 is Logan Wilson in the 33 car let's go back through the rest of the top 10 here Michael Harvey doing very well here in that Red Bull Toyota and it's very possible you know it is not mathematically impossible that he could leave as the points leader if he came away with a good enough finish and Arnold Columbia ran into trouble in division two then you got John Dillon. He's running now in the 7th position in the 22 car. In 8th place, we got the car of Zohar Manud. He's just suddenly emerged himself into the top 10 in the 28. Good run for that guy right there. In the ninth position, we've got Jake Berg. He was involved in that earlier incident, but he's been able to recover. He's back up in the top 10 in ninth And a battle line here for 10th. That's between Joe Smith and Connor Germain. Now they're going to swap spots. One was low, one was high through turns one and two. Now they're going to swap those positions here through turns three and four. Connor Germain will now take position number 10. Look at Logan Ryan coming into the picture here. Logan Ryan actually is right there in the 11th position, I believe. Where is Sean Henley running? Henley's actually slipped back here. He's back here in the 13th area. He's way back here. But there's a rivalry that's going on between Sean Henley and Logan Ryan, and that was something we didn't cover here to see if that rivalry was going to ensue here at Atlanta. But right now, it seems like uh, they're not close enough to have any contact between either one of them. I'll tell you what, Henley's losing a ton of positions there in that six car. He did sustain some damage from that earlier wreck. Tim Walsh, though, continues to lead this race as he is starting to get some company, though. 
Connor Breton, Dougie Shears, Xavier Livingston doing their best to catch back up to the back bumper of that number 15 car. And we are closing in on the end of this race. As a matter of fact, when they hit the stripe, we're going to have seven laps to go. So Tim Walsh, Xavier Livingston, Connor Breton, and Dougie Shears, they may be the ones to decide this race. Logan Wilson's trying to catch back up to these guys as he runs in the fifth position, trying to make it a four-man fight for the win. He's uh, about maybe a back straightaway behind them, so he's got a bit of work to do before he can catch up and even think about battling for the top spot. But in this field, we got a total of two Fords and two Chevrolets ready to battle it out here to the finish. Dougie Shears to the inside of Tim Walsh. First battle Walsh has had on his hands ever since leading them to the restart a few laps ago. And it will be Dougie Shears taking the top spot. We got five laps to go, by the way, if you're keeping track. Connor Breton there. Here comes Michael Harvey. Actually, he just moved into the fifth position, did the Red Bull Toyota, as he moved by Logan Wilson. Michael Harvey going to be able to maybe have a top five finish unless Logan Wilson can close back in. And here we go. Dougie Shears about to get a challenge. That's for the lead as Connor Breton is all over his back bumper. Four laps remaining in this event. Dougie Shears, Connor Breton, Xavier Livingston, and Tim Walsh seem to be the four that are going to battle it out now, one of these four are going to go to victory lane. If the caution came out, I'm pretty certain that we would end up finishing this race under the caution flag. However, a lot of these fans up here in the stands are hoping no caution will happen because we got a good four-car fight for the win here on our hands with a total of four laps to go. Tim Walsh now sliding by Xavier Livingston for that second position. You know, even if Xavier does not win this race, Certainly has done a great job in his first two career starts in the Mobile One Cup Series. A win last week at Pocono and a very possible top five finish here at Atlanta the week after. So Xavier definitely doing a great job there ever since moving into that number 21 ride. Dougie Shears leads though. Tim Walsh, he was back at fourth. He's now gone by Xavier Livingston for third, by Breton for second. And now he's got his sights set on chasing down Dougie Shears for the top spot with three laps remaining. Tim Walsh trying to be a dr one of the drivers that starts out front and finishes out in front, but he's not been up front all day long. He's been back as far back as 20th position has this number 15. As he moves to the inside with two laps remaining, Tim Walsh going to take the top spot here from Dougie Shears. It's now Dougie Shears on the high side, Connor Breton down low. That's for second. West, or not West McCall, I'm sorry. Xavier Livingston moving into the inside of Dougie Shears. Try to take third. Now he's going to instead move to the middle groove. But he will indeed get a run on Dougie Shears off of turn four. White flag is displayed. Here we go. Who's going to win this thing? Tim Walsh out in front. Connor Breton second. They come up on the lap car of Eric Burton. They're going to make short work of him and blow by. As they split him three wide to Dougie Shears and Xavier Livingston. But they get through there. It's going to be Connor Breton and Tim Walsh, looks like, to battle this out. Breton all over the back bumper of the number 15. Two Fords are going to be battling out here out of turn four for the final time. Will Breton be able to make a move to the inside? He's looking, but he will not be able to. Tim Walsh picks up his first Mobile One Cup Series victory here in the Dollar General 375 at Atlanta. By no means is Tim Walsh doing well in the standings, but let me tell you what, Tim Walsh has been able to check off two things on his list number one win a mobile one cup series event number two get himself into the mobile one cup series all-star race and tim walsh another first time winner we ended up having uh timmy Pacioli end our first streak with his win here in the truck series division one but then in the truck series division two the first time winner list began again and it continues on. We're now up to two first-time winners in a row with Tim Walsh going to victory lane here today. Congrats to him. Here comes the finishing order. If you're in this race, be sure and check at the end of the Division 2 race to see where you are in the standings after your finish. Tim Walsh picks up his first career Mobile Cup Series victory and a ticket into the All-Star race for the Mobile One Cup Series this season. You've been watching the NSRA Offline Racing at its best.